the handbell ringers of Levisham and Lockton, better known as Ells Bells. Every year they help to fill Pickering Station with Christmas cheer. And for kids of all ages, the place becomes, quite simply, magic. John Fletcher and fireman Brian Carter check in for a Santa special. Oh, hey Brian, all right. Oh, hey. all right. Oh, a bit nippy out there. What are you doing at Christmas? Have you all planned or? No, just stay at home and just be a good lad. What engine have we got today? I'm going to go and have a look um, over there, mate. It's two. Tank. And the oh, tank. Oh, oh three, five, eh? Well, yes. they vaulted it round. It was wrapped in. It was wrapped in, yeah. Oh, well. Ah, <coughs> oh, she's there in all her glory. Goodness me. John's oiling up the engine. It takes hours of work to get the metal monsters up and running every day. And it can be chilly in the engine shed at 5.30 a.m. on a December morning. This time of the year we've warmed the oil on the, on the firebox store plate there, so it's easier, it flows a lot easier, see, that's the thing with it. Yes, of course it's hard work, but there's nowhere else John and the footplate crews would rather be. There's a lot of people who'd like to be here doing this, what I'm doing. There would be. Oh, oh. Who would travel miles? to do it and, uh, and actually do of course I mean my fireman I think is from Newcastle some guys come from all over the country really in fact from abroad we have firemen from Holland we had a we had a guy from America who used to come over here firing yes and off other railways in this country other preserve railways and uh, to, to work here which really is uh, possibly the best of them all What I'm doing here is, is what we did years ago. It hasn't altered at all. I mean, I was doing this 40 years ago, oiling these things up, and you never thought then that now they'd still be here. I mean, they should. Be. It's part of our uh, part of our heritage, really, isn't it? These steam locomotives. I mean, we invented the darn things. We gave them to the rest of the world. Now we're light years behind in our rail transport. But never mind. That's how things go. <laughs> When John's not managing the railway shop at Bromont Engine Shed, he's driving steam engines on the main line. And when he's not doing that, John's playing trains up in his spare bedroom. With myself, I'm happy surrounded by railways of any description. It doesn't matter whether it's, it's the main line or North York to Moors Railway, narrow gauge railway, model railways. I just have a natural love for, for railways, really. I don't think I've always been interested, really. I, uh, I think I was at least nine months old before I got an interest, you know, that <laughs> it sort of came about from there. But I seem to have been interested in it all my life, really, when uh, a youngster, uh, like model railways was the thing, uh, yeah, I'd spend ages just going round to the railway stations and taking engine numbers and going and on a weekend go out on the bikes, push bikes. Take you taking numbers, but that's when you could you, you, a day you could go out for a day, and parents could let you go out then and uh, and trust that you'd come back. <laughs> and the rest of John's place is more like a museum than a home, packed with railway memorabilia and models. I mean, it has probably got a bit over the top, really, but uh, <clears throat> it's like a ruddy museum, and I feel like one of the exhibits, really. I know uh, I've told them up there at the railway. If they found find me one morning slumped over at fireplace, I'll have to be stuffed and mounted at the doorway and just taking me a pound admission fee, you just put it in a box. You know, like when the dog, dogs died on the stations, 
and they stuffed and mounted them and you put so much money in. Uh, I can see me being like that, yeah, at the door there. Still taking money. <laughs> and they're taking money here too. In the railway's pickering office, they'll raise funds any way they can. This time of year, gift vouchers are really popular uh, for Christmas presents. People buy them, they can spend them in the shops, they can spend them on trains, they can spend them on the diamonds. That's a favourite one. And another favourite is the Santa specials. And that's meant wrapping thousands and thousands of presents and months and months of planning. The tremendous amount of work goes into Santa specials. We start off thinking about Christmas in something like July, uh, thinking about themes, uh, we have costumes to make, we have grotto to design, we've got to build it with the station to decorate, the trains to decorate. So every weekend from mid-October until beginning of December, we're working on the on the stations, getting them ready. And then every Saturday and Sunday leading up to Christmas, we're then busy with the actual running of the trains. Tremendous amount of people need to be involved. It takes at least 15 people to run the train, just the actual Santa side of the train without talking about guards and engine drivers and firemen. But those that come really enjoy it, it's really worthwhile. Further down the platform, they're giving the Santa special a bit of a wash and brush up. For cleaner Chris Lack, it's a chance to get the gloves on and the tapes out. Today, it's the same as always, status quo. I've got uh, every status quo record from 1968. Um, I've got all their albums, every single they've done. And I've got um, imported singles from abroad that were released over this country. Whatever you want, whatever you like. I've got a Japanese one, which is they're like uh, the best of status quo, but for the Japanese market, which has the words in English and Japanese, which is only if you can read Japanese like. <laughs> The earliest record I've got of theirs is um, 1967, The Spectres, we ain't got nothing yet. So it's been my dream to meet them. No, just to say, um, <coughs> like, uh, it's an absolute honour to meet them, like, you know, if I could meet them. Uh, for all the pleasure they've given me over all the years, all these years I've been following them. Jack is the other cleaner at Pickering, and when she's not on the train, she'll find her down the road, dishing out the chips. Hey, do you want anything else? Well, if you see them at the end of the day, they look as if, like a herd of Pigs has gone through them. You've never seen a state like them. There's crisps, sweets, spilt drinks. Uh, we have dirty nappies thrown under the seats. Um, well, you don't, I don't want to discuss the toilets. Get a lot of people on with their little dogs that leave li uh, little surprises for us every now and again. You know. In fact, I had a bit of running with a little lady this year because she let her dog cock her leg up on all the bins down on the platform. So I chased after her. Well, they need a wash for Santa's uh, room at the week, Santa specials, the room at the weekend. So we're just going, giving them a clean up, pick a bit of muck off, and the glass is filthy anyway, so we just uh, let them a bit cleaner for the, for the weekend. It takes us all of a week to get them back to scratch again. And all that. We're sometimes clocking out of here at 10, 10 at night. Yeah. And then back on again at 6 in the morning. Yeah, it's never ended, it's all work. To 
work, it's a nice place. I think if, if you didn't like working on the railway, you wouldn't be here because the pay on, on this railway as a preserved railway is not comparative with working for rail track or Jarvis or people like that. Their, their pay is far higher than ours here. So it's a mixture of a, a, a wage that you can live on and actually enjoying your job. And there's a lot to be said for making a compromise like that. On the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, another Santa special wheezes down the line. And what's your name? Oliver. Say Oliver. 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 Right, Oliver. There we go. There's a special ticket for you. Across at Platform 3, they're getting the Pullman coaches ready for a Christmas diner. Morning, everyone. 103, I believe, for lunch today. Saturday 20th, all right? Saturday 20th, 103. In the bar, we've got Ron and Glennis. In the kitchen, we've got Janet and Jade. And in the other kitchen, we've got um, Matthew and James, okay? The operation's very slick, but with over a hundred diners on a narrow train, you have to know exactly what you're doing. Two people will clear all the starters for each carriage, and then one steward will come through and plate up. And what we do is follow forward. So where you see the tables set out four and twos in here, we work our way forward, and that way we're checking left and right that everyone's got their main course, the vegetables and potatoes follow on straight on. There is no time delay. Very important that people get their full meal served all together at once. It is orchestrated with military precision. Mm. Got to be, because again, the train waits for no man. We're due out at 10 to 12. We are heading for on-time departure. Vegging, we've got Linda and Dan. Glennis will do sourcing and checking. Well, gravy is Andrew. And serving, we've got Rosie, Vicky and Joe. Everybody know what they're doing. OK, good luck everyone. Let's have a good run. Well, it just takes us back to a bygone age, really, of what, what travelling was really about. I think it's just the, the novelty of the, of the train and having a lovely meal as well. It's good, yeah. Really enjoy it. Well, it's a bit like fairyland, really. You're going backwards to, to your childhood memories of trains. On the Santa Special, they're getting through a mountain of presents. Another amazing effort by the railway's volunteers. They spend days and days and days prior, getting it all ready, packing up the parcels, taking all the bookings. And have we got anyone here who would like to go and see Father Christmas? Yeah, and would you like to go and see him now? You would, okay. Right, if you take a very slow walk down there, he's ready to see you. Okay. Cheers. 
Lauren. This is for Lauren. This is for Lauren. There you are, Lauren. That's for you. We probably six or seven people in the train, apart from Santa, who are just supervising the children, making sure they have a, a happy trip. Now then, Jordan, what would you like for Christmas? Just some things. And what would you like? Well, um, um, it's a completely one off to bring a child onto a steam train and meet Santa and have a present off him. He's not in his sleigh, he's in the porch on the steam train. Well, there's a special present for you, Nicholas, for today. Ideal opportunity for the parents to bring them out for the day. Not just to meet Sandra, but to ride on the train. All the scenery. You don't get that in a department store, do you? The trains are not quite as reliable as the reindeer, but the reindeer have been doing a job for many, many years. The trains have only been here since 1836, so I've been in the business for two or three hundred years before then. So I think everything will be fine. cleaner Chris Lack at home with his heroes. It's the music. The music's the most important of all. Um, it's the adrenaline what goes through you when you see him live. And they need the volume up and let, let it rock. It's been my dream to meet him. Uh, I'd love to meet him uh, for all the pleasure they've given me over the years and, and thousands of other fans and Spoke to Andrew United. Well, Chris, tonight's the night. York's Barbican Centre, let's rock. Hi, right, Rick. How you doing? Absolute honour, this is, to finally meet you. Yeah, I see you're a Quo fan. Oh, absolutely mad on you. Smashing. Can't be no better than a Quo fan. And you work on the railway, so I can't remember. This is all I've heard. Carriage clean on the railway. Are you? I was mad in Joe Tall. Alright then, how's yeah. that? Do you know the Bluebell Railway? Yeah, yeah. yeah I used to, I, I drove, a, yeah. drove a steam engine on there. Yeah. Which was fantastic. Yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. I used to hang off bridges when I was a kid, yeah. you know. Yeah. When trains used to come along, they just used to hang there. Yeah. Our parents used to, could see us, I mean, yeah. they would have had a fit. Honoured to finally meet you. Same hairdresser yeah, as me then? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Apart from you, but, um, you know, I've had mine put back in. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> Reclaimed. Reclaimed, yeah. yeah. Barry Manilow, that's <laughs> not your name. <laughs> Thanks, good luck. See you later. Thanks very much. See you, Rick. See you, Francis. See you. Keep on rocking. You say never, say never. I couldn't ask for anything better. You know, my dream come true has finally happened and I've met them and uh, they didn't give me some tickets to get to see a concert as well. Absolutely marvellous. The Santa specials and the Christmas diners waddle slowly home. All this enjoyment has been exhausting.
think that we've done something like 11,000, 12,000 mince pies and coffees. We've done winter warmers for fathers so they can sit there and say, oh, let the children get on with it, I've got a nice drink. We try to make everybody as happy as we possibly can. And it's wonderful for the, for the volunteers because it's the one time of year you can relax and enjoy yourself because everybody's in a good, in, is in a good mood. And so Chris, the build up to Christmas is nice for us as well as them. It's hard work, but everybody enjoys it. Last train has gone. We've uh, we finished now for a few days, so it's wending its way back to the engine shed. They'll drop the fire and they'll put it to bed. Everything can go nice and cold for a few days, and we'll go away and enjoy Christmas. So that's really nice. Next time on Yorkshire Steam, volunteer Colin finally gets behind the controls of a steam engine and he's not disappointed. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful.